on the five gallon tall at least less than two parts. I thought I'd give you a shot of the tank. NO3-1. They climb all over the Gorgonians. Hey guys, I thought what we would do today is something really unique, but it's got to be on the honor system from me. I want to be honest. I haven't tested my water in probably about three months. So I thought what we could do today is test water and I'll do it as real time as possible. So you can kind of see the way I do it. This would be for beginners. You already saw that I use salifert nitrate and I use the Hanna checker for phosphate. And the reason why I'm choosing those is we've all had bouts with algae. If you're beginners, it's going to happen. So I thought I would show you not so much how to test, but how to recognize that when your tank is doing fine and it looks nice and crisp, like I said last week, there really isn't a need for testing all the time. However, you don't want to have to test when things are disaster. Phosphate is going to be the interesting one because that's really what can create algae problems. Let's see what happens today when I test nitrate and phosphate. Okay, let's get into the video. All right, guys, five and a half gallon tall. We're going to use salifert. This isn't going to be all about how to test. I'm sure all you guys know it. You should know it. And here's the two tests. A little spoon, a syringe, and this thing. The vial. Alright. Okay, one mil. Four drops of NO3-1. One, two, three, four. One level scoop of NO3-2. Putting that in here. Swirl, don't shake for 30 seconds. Put that over here. All right, you let that sit there for five minutes, which it's been. Here's your card. Here's zero on this side. What you do to get a more accurate reading is you hold it this way against the card. As you can see at zero, you don't see anything. There's no transition between the right hand side here and the left. As you go up, now you can start seeing it. See at two parts per million, you can see the pink on the right side. That means I have at least less than two parts because when I come down here, you can't see any color change. So that's it guys, at least less than two parts per million because you can see the two there and you don't see it here. It's a five gallon tall trace, zero parts per million. All right. All right, so we're gonna do the five gallon tall guys for phosphate. Here we go, phosphate. That should do it. Okay, the C1. C2. These. Two minute shake. Okay, the timer's on. Counting down. Getting close. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, wow. Okay, 0 0.35. All right, guys, so 0 0.35 is high in the realm of especially SPS growth and health. 
but if you saw in both my tanks the tanks look really good so it's up to you it's a choice you have to make it's very possible that if I keep my phosphate lower maybe I'd get quicker growth from my SPS but I know why 0.35 is the case it's because I feed like crazy and I've chosen to do that because I do a lot of water change my madness. Then the next thing I feed are my frozen food, which I thaw out. You can see that in my Feed Me video. And my fish are healthy. I don't like to starve the animals in the aquarium. You have to do a lot of water change to feed like this, guys. Every week I do 50%. So that's what I choose, and if I don't see any algae issues, then 0.35 is fine with me. The numbers don't mean everything, guys. I'm sure the Calerpa, the great Calerpa algae here, is taking some out. If I didn't have that, it might even be higher. Phosphate definitely is keeping my nitrate lower. So that's it. You don't need to test your water for the next three months. No. What I'm trying to point out here is that if your tank, your reef tank looks great, then maybe you don't need to test every week. All right, guys, that's it for this one. See you Wednesday on Water Change Wednesday. I'm gonna continue that with a couple questions. So until then, have a great day, and I'll see you on the next one. Paleos are closed up because a blue leg hermit crab just ravaged through there. They are a pain in the ass. They